G'day guys, Charlie here from Off To Adventure and this is my MT1 camping trailer. Right, hey, welcome back guys. So today I'm just going to run you through uh, my MT1 camping trailer and uh, just give you a look at what I've done, how I've set mine up. Now, when I looked at trailers a couple of years ago, guys, I could not believe the price that they was charging for a camping trailer. It's not even a caravan. Um, and then on top of that, the biggest thing for me was, of course I lived right up north of WA, was paying for the freight from over east coming all the way across. Some guys wanted $10,000 just in the freight itself. Option for me, drive across there, five days driving, five days back, plus the fuel on top of that. You know, I'm, I'm still blowing the cost of a trailer right out the window, more than what I'd ever thought about spending on it. Then I've seen the MT1s coming up, and I thought, hello, look at these. Look at what they've got. Those tick in the boxes, slide out kitchen, they've got the water tank, uh, the chassis frames heavy built and the storage alone it's probably still one of the best or most available storage that I've seen in nearly every camping trailer that's out there. So let's get going guys and we'll have a bit of a look at how I've set mine up. Righto guys so let's start up at the front we've got the DO35 now this is a full rotation 360 degree rotation here very simple to put on push these in when you drop it down push a little button and it flicks back out and locks itself in. These are one of the best on the markets for any type of caravan or trailer. They come with a standard jockey wheel. Now, this one here, it's not a fold away. You have to undo it, take it off and put it away. The fold away ones that just fold up on the side or twist up on the side, I'm yet to set one of them onto there. On the front, we've got some great storage. We have a gas bottle on one side, on the other, on the other side, we have twin jerry can holders. They're in the front here, guys. I'm just currently using this for the toolbox area. My little husky chainsaw. Gotta love a husky. Jockey wheel sits in there, toolboxes go in there. Any other bits and pieces that I don't normally use get locked away in the toolbox. Come over to the slide out kitchen here, guys. Now, very early in the piece, I was running a 95 litre brass monkey fridge now i'm not going to bag out the brass monkey i've done several trips with it and it was a fantastic and a great fridge but over a period of time and i'm not sure whether it's the 40 plus degree heat up here it kept on cutting out on the compressor and coming up with a fault code so i've had this trip planned for a few months and uh, i was not going to be 400 k's in the middle of nowhere with a fridge that breaks down so i went for the dometic this is the cfx range dometic 75 litre, great fridge. 
compatible with your phone, run the Bluetooth off the phone and it runs perfect. So slide out kitchen guys, this is a great little kitchen. I do use a Camp Master twin, just dropped a little can into there. Good thing about these guys is they slot on, low wind going through there, kettle or saucepan, whatever you want under there. And then it's just got the little uh, collapsible sink there. Now we do have, I believe it's 100 litres of water underneath. Okay, that runs on the pressure. As soon as you turn your tap on, your water comes out. And then the front here, just where I keep all my knives and bits and pieces I use directly for cooking. So into the pantry area, guys. Now this pantry area here is set up. It's an optional when you first get the trailer to come in. Uh, pantry area set up. Now I've done a fair bit in here. I've put in a little power point in the back. You can see for the speaker. Move the speaker out of the way. So I've got a power point there which runs off the uh, 1500 inverter on the other side. I've set up some Anderson plugs here, 12 volt Anderson plugs that I use for the kick ass oven plugs into. And then my light set up here for the uh, hardcore lights that are up here. Now these are multi coloured guys, have the bright white, the off white, or it goes on to the orange. As we can see, there is the orange colour there. This is great for out in the outback keeping the bugs away. I uh, just run a little coffee machine, again that goes off my 1500 watt inverter without an issue, that runs quite well. Uh, just a couple little containers there, the one on the end from Kmart, this one here set up, knives, forks, plates, bits and pieces, and then the food is in all the others that are set up here. In the background, a couple more there, top ones just with a toothpaste, shampoo, Soap, whatever I need if I feel like I want to be uh, nice and clean in the middle of the bush. Okay, around the back here, guys. Now, on the tailgate here, I, when I set up for camping, I just stick my uh, some utensils and bits and pieces up there. Got the axe there, knife that I carry, spare torch. And in the back, look how much space these have in the back. So I've got a little gen set up there. If anything happens, I'll run out of power or need additional lights for whatever reason. Got a back up there to keep the power charged. Coming under the back drawer, open this up. Now that's where my little fold up table lives that I sit in here. There's a little fold up table there, guys. That just folds up, sits in the back here. Plenty of storage space. There's my extra light kits. Guys, a must have first aid kit when you're out bush, especially up here in the in the outback of Australia, snake kit is one of the most important things to carry up here. Now also I run the Darshi 270 awning. This is a great awning. Uh, they recommend that you do put the poles up. It can be freestanding if you want to be freestanding, but I do put the poles up. Uh, we can get a bit of gust of wind up here occasionally throughout the night. And last thing I want to do is wake up in the morning uh, having this awning wrapping around the top of the uh, rooftop tent. Having saying that, rooftop tent, I run the Darshi in Trepador. There it is up there now. I don't keep the windows open, I keep everything closed up, and there is a reason for that. There is a reason for that. The reason is, inside, I have one of these. Turn this around. Have one of these little air coolers, mini evaporator cooler. So fill that up with water. I run the cable off the front here, which we'll get to this in a minute. Power cable goes in and that keeps that nice and cool up in there. And uh, I don't have to worry about the hot nights. Guys, still pushing the nights here last night, 33, 34 degrees, and I'm sleeping with the doona over the top. It's nice and cool. Right guys, so into the powerhouse here, or the side of it, we have a C-Tech DC-DC charger. I've got the two Kings power boxes set up in there, running 235 amp hour batteries. With the Kings 1500 inverter down the bottom. Now up to the rooftop tent for a quick look inside and I'll show you the little mini cooler, air cooler that I have. So just in the rooftop tent, little air cooler sits on the side there, 
ticks away and the, bring the power up through this join here or where the framework comes up out of. So Anderson plugs on the side here guys. Top one is for the input for the solar panel. Bottom one here, I have this hook straight into the batteries. I have a little master switch down here, that's the power, straight into the batteries. So if I need to use my air compressor, or like last night, set up for the mini air cooler. They're on the front here guys, I run the little kick ass shower tent. So that just swings around to the side, set that up. And uh, when I'm out bush there, have a shower, which I uh, will be doing a bit later this morning before we head off. They're also on the top, guys, I've set up hardcore 170 watt solar panel. Now I've just come up with a new design here that I can actually run two panels. The panel here is the new one that I've put on the last couple of days. That is actually swing around, so when I set up the tent, it sits up the top there. So there's my second one guys, that's set up over the front there. And that's designed so it swings away. Have the little pole there that it swings in. So when the rooftop tent's packed up and I'm traveling, I then have two 170 watt solar panels powering up the battery box. Now in this side here guys, I've actually put in a couple of the King's drawers I've got set up, this one here. Just chuck a heap of cooking gear in for that one. This one here, guys, just set up barbecue gear, bits and pieces as well. So that gives me a lot more storage for stuff that I'm not using a lot of the time. A couple of small boxes there, guys. I still carry a fair bit of electrical gear. I'm still finding uh, bits and pieces to do if I'm bored, out in the bush for a couple of hours. I've got some more lights to put in and set up. Also on both sides, I have the LED light that comes with the trailer. Spare on the back. Now I've run the exit tracks recovery boards. I've got them sitting on the back there. So if I'm out bush, I get stuck, I can use them for the trailer. I'll just give you uh, a bit of a look how this swing away solar panel works. So it just goes back around. Swings back over the top and then slots in up there. Now all I've got to do is uh, make up a actual bolt mechanism to hold it on there. For the meantime, we just strap it down with a strap. And there we go. That gives me two 170 watt hardcore solar panels. Now, if we have a look here, I've had the lights going last night. I've had the, the fridges going, coffee machine. Uh, so the batteries are pretty much chock-a-block full running through the DC-DC C-Tech uh, solar controller and everything else that it controls. Great bit of kit guys. I say the batteries are chock-a-block full and uh, that's us for the day. Right, hey guys, so let's have a look in the back here. Now, I've come out here on this trip and yesterday I traveled, I think it was 250 kilometers on dirt, dusty roads. And some of it's bull dust pretty atrocious. Now you can see here guys the amount of dirt, the amount of dirt that's on the back here. Now honestly guys when you look in the back there I can just, 
I can just make out a little bit that's gone in through the back. Now, a good point I picked up here, guys. Let's have a look here. I don't know if you can see, I found where the dust is coming in. To see on the corner there, you can see where it's clean and where it's not. Also down on the bottom here, it's completely missed. There's an area there on the corner. It has completely missed that little corner piece. Let me have a look here. You can just see, just see the dust here coming in on that corner. Right, now it's just catching here. So I think I'll need to put a little bit more rubber in there. And we also see in the top here, just see here where it's missed. This is where the dust will be coming in, right on the corners. Right here. And just down here. But apart from that, guys, like seriously, look at the amount of dust here. Apart from that, there's not really a lot of dust going in anywhere. And just see on this corner up there, you can see the mark. Now, hot little tip, guys. What I do every time I'm out and I stop and open up is I'll get the wet rag and I'll just give these a nice clean with a bit of a wet rag there just to get all that dust off back around the seals on all the doors and that'll give you a nice clean seal ready for your next day's adventures. Righto guys, so I do run a couple of stabiliser legs under the back here. These are the Alcos, uh, I believe they're the 740mm or something length. Uh, now I didn't actually put them down last night because I'm still hooked on to the back of the four-wheel drive and realistically for me by myself last night I'd never noticed it at all. That's us all packed up. Now a hot little tip, just remember if you've been out on dusty roads and you know you're going back out again on more dusty tracks just open all them doors up before you leave. Literally takes two minutes with a wet rag and just wipe down each one of them seals on the doors. And you'll find that uh, you'll have nice clean seals touching each other and that'll minimize any dust that comes in. If you do see dust coming in, like I've just seen on, uh, I showed you before in the rear one, on the corners there, I'll just get a little bit of the sticky foam out of the hardware shop and uh, just put some over them covers on the corners. Just cover up where that dust is coming in. Well, that's me done. And uh, we're heading back off and trying to find this great little spot I'm going for. It's a little sinkhole up here that's got a fairly big extensive case system underneath it. So until next time, guys, we'll see you somewhere beyond the black stump. Mm -hmm.